Happy Easter everybody and welcome to Sunday School this morning on this really special day. We're thinking about good news today. Maybe you've received some good news this week. It's really good news that now we're allowed to meet some family and friends outside if we want to. Maybe you've had some good news that later on today you might be going on an Easter egg hunt. Maybe you'll get some chocolate eggs to enjoy. I had some good news earlier this week when I received a parcel and I opened it up and inside was this huge chocolate egg. I'm going to really enjoy eating that later. So at Easter we celebrate some really special good news, the best news of all, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and then he rose from the dead. This is definitely good news that's worth sharing. This is the best news ever. Jesus died and rose again to show us how powerful he is. Jesus' friends were sad. They would never see their best friend again. How could this happen? Wasn't Jesus the rescuer? The king God had promised it wasn't supposed to end like this. Yes, but who ever said anything about the end? Just before sunrise on the third day, God sent an earthquake and an angel from heaven. When the guards saw the angel, they fell down with fright. The angel rolled the huge stone away, sat on top of it and waited. At the first glimmer of dawn, Mary Magdalene and other women headed to the tomb to wash Jesus' body. The early morning sun slanted through the ancient olive trees, drops of dew glittering on leaves and grasses like little tears everywhere. The friends walked quietly along the hilly path through the olive groves until they reached the tomb and immediately noticed something old. It was wide open. They peered through the opening into the dark tomb. But wait, Jesus' body was gone. And something else, a shining man was there with clothes made from lightning. Don't be scared, the angel said, but they couldn't help it. They screamed anyway. The angel asked, what are you doing here? This is a tomb and tombs are for dead people. The women couldn't speak. Jesus isn't dead anymore, he said. He's alive again. And their hearts leapt. And then the angel laughed with such gladness that they felt for a moment as if they had woken from a nightmare. The other women rushed home, but Mary stayed behind. How could it be true? Jesus was definitely dead. How could he be alive? Just then, Mary heard someone else in the garden. Perhaps it's the gardener, she thought. He'll know where Jesus' body is. I don't know where Jesus is, Mary said urgently. I can't find him. But it was all right. Jesus knew where she was, and he had found her. Mary! Only one person said her name like that. She could hear her heart thumping. She turned around. She could just make out a figure. She shaded her eyes to see, and thought she was dreaming. But she wasn't dreaming. She was seeing. Jesus! Mary fell to the ground. Sudden tears filled her eyes, and great sobs shook her whole body, and all she wanted in that moment was to cling to Jesus and never let him go. You'll be able to hold on to me later, Mary, Jesus said gently, and always be close to me. But now, go and tell the others that I am alive. Mary ran and ran all the way to the city. She had never run so fast or so far in all her life. She felt she could have run forever. She didn't even feel like her feet touched the ground. The sun seemed to be dancing and gleaming and bounding across the sky, racing with her and shining brighter than she could ever remember in the clean, fresh air. And it seemed to her that that morning, as she ran, almost as if the whole world had been made anew, almost as if the whole world was singing for joy. The trees, the tiny sounds in the grass, the birds, her heart. Was God really making everything sad come untrue? Was he making even death come untrue? She couldn't wait to tell Jesus' friends. They won't believe it, she laughed. She was right, of course. Now that we've heard that story, we've got a little challenge for you. So I've got a sentence here and I've got some words that have got a bit mixed up. So I want you to see if you can spot the word that shouldn't be in the sentence and spot the word that I need to pop in in its place. So this sentence says, Just before sunrise, God sent a violent tornado and an angel. Hmm, one of those words isn't quite right. I think, I don't think God sent a tornado, did he? Which one of these words do you think we could put in its place? Angel, Jesus, earthquake or stone? Have a little think. Hmm, it wouldn't be... God sent a violent stone, or don't I think we'll go with God sent a violent earthquake. So now it reads, just before sunrise, God sent a violent earthquake and an angel. That makes much more sense. Right, let's try another one. The cleaner told the woman not to be afraid. Is that right? Does that sound right to you? Hmm, who did tell the woman not to be afraid? It was an angel, wasn't it? So let's pop that word on there. Well done if you got that one right. Okay, next one. It's a little bit easy now, we've only got two words to choose from. 
The angel rolled the curtain away from the tomb. Did the angel roll the curtain away from the tomb? Did the angel roll Jesus away from the tomb? Or did the angel roll the stone away from the tomb? Which one of those words would make sense in that sentence? It's the stone, isn't it? The angel rolled the stone away from the tomb. And the last one. The angel told the women that Moses had risen. I think we all know the answer to that one, didn't we? The story wasn't about Moses, it was about Jesus and how he rose from the dead. The angel told the best news there has ever been. Jesus was no longer in the tomb, he was alive. Jesus died and rose to show his power over sin and death. And that's great news for all of us. Happy Easter. So, why is this good news so important? Why does Jesus being alive again matter so much? Now, I've got some wonderfully drawn pictures to try and give you a hand. In the beginning, God and man were together. Everything was perfect exactly as it ought to be. But there was a problem. All the wrong things that we do, every bad thought, action, is sin. And this sin separates us from God because God is perfect. He can't be around anything bad like that. So that wonderful, perfect relationship is completely broken. And we, all us people, can't get to God. There's nothing we can do to deal with this sin. We can't get rid of it. We can't hide it. We can't break it. It's there and it spoils our perfect relationship with God. But God had a plan. Jesus came to earth, lived a perfect life, never ever committed sin and he died on the cross to deal with all of that sin forever and he rose from the dead to show his power over that sin and over that death which means we can get to God we can have our perfect relationship because of Jesus nothing that we can do everything that God did in sending Jesus to fix it for us Jesus died and rose again to show his power over sin and death for you. Only Jesus could bridge the gap between God and people. What Jesus did means that one day you too can rise from the dead and live in heaven if you accept Jesus as your saviour. And that's why this news is so amazing. Now, to help us remember everything Jesus did, we're going to make a little craft. You will need a piece of paper and five coloured pens and you'll see which colours in a minute. And the first thing you can have a go at doing is trying to draw an egg shape like an Easter egg. Now, as you've just seen, my drawing is not ideal, but I'm going to give it a go. So let's see if I can draw something resembling a rather lumpy egg. There we go, that's my egg. And I want you to draw five lines across the middle so it splits into six parts. So one, two, three, four, five. Like this. Okay. Now, the colours are to help us. In the top section, the first part of your egg, we're going to colour it yellow to remind us of God's perfect light. Yep, nice, bright, sunshiny yellow to remind us of God's perfect light. If you want to make yours fancy and go for patterns and wonderful things, brilliant. I'm just trying to hope my pens hold out long enough to colour the top bit yellow. So I've got yellow for God's perfect light to remember how the story started. The next colour you need to find is red. I wonder what red's going to represent. I'll tell you. Red is for the blood that Jesus shed for us on the cross. Why Easter is so important. Red for the blood that paid for all of my sin, all of your sin, everybody's sin, to make us right with God forever. So when you see the red stripe on your egg, you can remember Jesus' blood. I'm just making sure my red comes out strong enough. And again, I'm doing mine quickly for the video. You can take as long as you like and make yours look really, really good. Okay, so I've got my yellow stripe for God's perfect light, red for Jesus' blood shed for us. Next one, I'm gonna leave blank because I need white. White is for the cleansing of all our sin. It says what sometimes, washed white as snow. Not most of the sin gone, not nearly all the sin gone, all completely gone. Jesus washed it away as white as snow. And the next one, green. If you've looked outside recently, you might have seen all the new life, the new grass, the new leaves on the trees. 
this green is for the new life we can have in Jesus. So remember to leave my white stripe. The next stripe down, I'm going to cut a green for the new life we have in Jesus. Because we are not the same people. Once we accept Jesus to be our saviour, we're not the same people we were before. We are a new creation, something made completely new and wonderful because of what Jesus has done. So just get my green stripe coloured. Yep. Yellow for God's perfect light. Red for the blood of Jesus washing away our sins. White for our sins washed white as snow. Green for the new life we have in Jesus. The next one, blue. I've only got dark blue left, I'm afraid, but you can do any shade of blue. Blue is for the water. When you choose Jesus as your king, one thing you might do is get baptised. And if you're baptised, it shows that you have changed. You're not the same inside as you were before. That you don't follow sin anymore, you follow Jesus. It shows the new life you've got. It shows we're alive in Jesus. Can I remember them? Yellow for God's perfect light. Red for Jesus' blood shed for us. White for our sin washed away white as snow. Green for the new life we have in Jesus. Blue for the water of baptism to show we're alive in Jesus now. And the last one, purple. Often used as a royal colour. The purple reminds us that Jesus is now king of our lives. He's the one that's in charge. He's the one we're going to follow, the one we're going to listen to. And he's the reason we're celebrating this Easter. So let me just colour in my purple stripe at the bottom. And there you have a lovely striped Easter egg with colours to help remind you. Let's see if I can do them all. Ready? Yellow for God's perfect light. Red for Jesus' blood shed for us. White for our sins washed white as snow. Green for new life in Jesus. Blue for the waters of baptism because we're alive in Jesus now. And purple, the royal colour, to show that Jesus is king of our life. I hope if you make one of these, you can put it up somewhere and help remind you not just at Easter, but all year round, why this is all so important. Jesus has beaten sin and death forever and that is always worth celebrating. Happy Easter. See you soon.